My name is Alex, I'm with WMD, and this is the Sequential Switch Matrix, or as we affectionately call it, the SSM. The SSM is a routing system that houses four analog inputs and four analog outputs in a matrix-style layout. Each can be assigned with coordinating LEDs and buttons that we will refer to as switches. When an LED is lit, that switch is on, and will therefore pass signal through the desired routing. The switches are labeled in a manner of XY axes, Y coming first on the switch's label. The X axis refers to the output jacks and the Y axis refers to the input jacks. For example, if the LED for switch 1-1 is lit, the SSM will pass the signal from input 1 straight on through to output 1. If the LED for switch 1-2 is lit, input 1 will be sent to output 2. This is true for all of the routings in the SSM. If two or more of the LEDs are lit for the same output channel, the two signals will be mixed at unity gain. If two or more LEDs are lit for the same input channel, then the input signal will be buffered, split, and sent to the corresponding outputs again at unity gain. The SSM allows for 16 separate matrices to be stored in each of its four onboard savable banks. Each matrix is assigned either a number or a letter on the matrix counter, zero being the lowest step and F being the highest. So watching the display, you will see that stepping through occurs 0 through 9 and then continues A through F, counting for 16 steps. When the top step is reached, the SSM will start over at step 0, just like any standard sequencer running through a normal sequence. What makes the SSM special and an incredibly fun module to work with is that you can scroll through different matrices via a clock signal or CV. This is responsible for creating rhythmic patterns that can be quite interesting and even melodic if you route it right. More on that later. But first, let's go through the buttons and what they do. Each button is dual functioned and differentiated between tapping and holding. The black labels are what will occur from a tap and the red labels are the outcome from holding the button down. The step button is for manually stepping through the matrices. This is very useful when programming a sequence, as you can thoughtfully route your signals step by step and plan out what you want to have happen ahead of time. Holding the step button puts the SSM in hold slash slave mode, stopping the sequence from stepping whether you are using CV or a gate input to do so. In this mode, the only way to step through matrices is by tapping the step button, stepping through one at a time. Its LED will light red when in this mode, and holding the button again lets the CV or trigger inputs take back over. The step down button will reverse the direction in which the SSM is sequencing through the matrices. When the green LED is lit, the sequence is reversed, stepping down, in this case from matrix F all the way to matrix zero. Whether you are stepping through manually or with a clock or with CV, if the step down LED is illuminated, the sequence will be reversed. Holding the same step down button, will trigger the red label for gate random. The LED will light up the color red, indicating that the SSM is now operating in gate random mode. This will cause the SSM to step through the matrices in a random pattern instead of up or down. Notice that pressing the step button still steps through linearly. Gate random mode is only active when the SSM is receiving a trigger or gate from the step gate input and is independent of the CV input and step button. R&D MTX, or random matrix, will trigger a random routing matrix on whichever step it is pushed. Every time the button is pushed, a new routing is chosen by random. If you find one you like, leave it alone and start stepping through the matrices again. Once that step is recalled, the same routing will be recalled. R&D RCL stands for random recall. Pushing and holding this button while on a step will cause that step to be recalled with a random setting each time it is selected. This is great for adding random textures and changes to a sequence, as well as creating completely random sequences by selecting each step to be in random recall mode. The top step button does exactly what you think it will do. It sets the top of your sequence. If you'd rather have an eight step sequence instead of 16, just step through to step seven and set it as the top step. Now stepping through linearly with the step gate input will only step through matrices zero through seven, making eight steps. Holding the top clear button will clear the top step that was previously set, causing the SSM to step through all the way from zero to F again. The CV limit button enables CV limit mode, 
meaning that the CV input will be restricted to the top step set by the top set button. When in this mode, the LED will light up green. When not in this mode, the LED will be off and CV will be able to go past the top step, meaning that if you have a sequence running through steps zero through seven, the CV input will bypass the top step of seven and will be allowed to take the sequence all the way to step F if the voltage is high enough to take it there. When the LED is lit green, the CV will be limited to stopping at the top step that you set, in this case, step seven. The CV sets top mode, triggered by holding the button, will illuminate the LED red and lets you set the top step of the sequence with CV. In this mode, CV no longer controls the steps, but rather can modulate the top step of the sequence you are stepping through, whether it be manually or with the step gate input. The two red buttons on the SSM refer to functions of its onboard memory. Tapping the bank button will switch through the SSM's four banks, which are labeled by the color of a single LED. LED off equals bank one, LED green equals bank two, LED red, bank three, and LED orange equals bank four. Holding this button saves all banks, routings, modes, and settings into the SSM's internal non-volatile memory. After saving, power cycling the SSM will reset the settings to when they were last saved. If you're planning on recalling a patch or setting up for a live show or just for use at a later date, save it. Change any bank all you want and a power cycle will recall the SSM to its last saved settings. Tapping the clear matrix button will clear the routing matrix for which the button is pushed. Pushing and holding the reset button will reset the matrix counter to zero. Keep in mind that CV is not a part of the counter and can still offset the matrix that is output. The CV input is for sending the SSM controlled voltage signals from a source such as a VCO to cycle through the matrices. The step gate input accepts gate signals in order to step through the matrices. Send this input a signal from a clock and rhythmically step through the matrices creating fun and interesting sequences. The reset input also accepts gate signals and will reset the counter back down to zero. The compare input is for voltage. Its input voltage is compared to each channel's output voltage. If the output voltage is higher than the compare in voltage, the compare output will be high and send a positive 10 volt gate signal to the corresponding channel's jack labeled one greater than comp, two greater than comp, etc. These jacks are the compare outs and only send gate signals of positive 10 volts. They are great for triggering other pieces of gear like sequencers via a clock input or drum modules. DAC or DAC stands for Digital to Analog Conversion. The DAC output is generated from the status of the first two columns of the SSM. It is a weighted digital to analog conversion and switch 1-1 is the most significant bit carrying a weight of 2.5 volts. 2-1 is exactly half that weight, 1.25 volts. 4-2 is the least significant bit carrying a weight of 0.02 volts. The two columns provide an 8-bit voltage output which is always present. When sending the SSM CV from a VCO, listen to the DAC output as it becomes an 8-bit wavetable oscillator. You can change the amount of voltage sent by each matrix by experimenting with turning on and off switches in the first two columns of the matrix. By putting each matrix into random recall mode, the SSM is now an 8-bit random noise source and can spit out some pretty awesome noise. When using the step gate input, the CV offset acts as a start point offset. Notice when the reset button is pushed, we no longer reset to zero, but to where the knob is located. When using the CV input, the CV offset knob has the same function and affects which step the SSM will reset to.
CV scale attenuates the CV input and affects how sensitive the input will be to control voltage signals. We hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you. More demos of the SSM in action will be out soon.